Hi guys, my name is Kimmy from the Bridget Library and today we'll be making our teen snowflake string art. So this string art project is a little complicated and may just take a little bit of time. So um, take breaks in between. This doesn't have to be done in one sitting. Um, if you get flustered or it just takes a lot of time. So like I said, do it and work on it a little bit. Take a break, get a snack, go watch some TV, go read a book, come back to it and um, yeah, so I recommend watching the full video just so you can get a sense of what everything you need is for. So use it in the correct way, okay? So I'm going to show you what you should have gotten in your kits. Okay, so what you should have gotten in your kit is a small block of wood. You will have some blue paint, a paintbrush. You will have um, these two different snowflake templates. One is black. And one is this. This one is kind of just a guide to show you where the nails go. Just an extra um, support to show you guys how and where the nails go. Just in case if you can't tell in the video that I'm showing you. And this is a snowflake so you can trace it onto your wood block. And I will show you how to do that later on. You also will get a bunch of tiny nails and two bigger nails. You will also get a pencil, and that's to trace your thing, your snowflake. You also get this wax paper with some tape on it. It's to help you hold down your stencil. And um, this blue piece of tape, I will show you um, when we use it, how to use it. And some string. Okay, so we're going to get started. I'm going to show you what the first steps are. Okay, so your first step is you are going to paint your block. Um, you can decide if you don't want to paint it. It is up to you. The string is white, so I gave you some pretty blue paint to paint on here. If you, um, you can start here. You can paint the sides. You can paint the back if you want. You don't have to paint whatever you'd like. If you have other paint, you can put some like white here or gray or silver and then blue. Um, it's really up to you. You don't have to use blue paint if you have more paint at home. So first, you're going to let paint your block how you like it, and then you're going to let that dry completely. And then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so the next step is we are going to trace our snowflake onto our wood piece. Um, I tried to do this without tracing the snowflake and I found it to be a little bit complicated. So um, I know you might see the pencil mark of the snowflake, but that is okay. I think it will help in the long run. So once this is all painted, you're going to take your snowflake and you're just going to make sure you just turn it around, find a position where it works. This piece was hanging off, so we're going to push it back and find a good spot to where nothing's too close to the edge. So I find that is good. I gave you a couple pieces of tape um, just in case, but you don't really need to use all of them. So we're going to take a, a clear piece of tape and just tape just one side down, just so it doesn't move anywhere. And then you're going to trace. We do it very lightly so you don't see it as much. And you're just gonna go around and trace that snowflake. Do it nice and slow. You wanna have a nice trace. If you make it a little messy, that is okay. But just take your time. And I'm just holding my finger on the section I'm drawing on just so it doesn't look up. Doing it nice and light and gentle, just so I can be able to see it, but it's not super dark. And once you paint it, um, you might have a darker blue, so you might need to go a little bit darker. Mine is obviously lighter, so just enough to where you could see it. I know this will help you when you string your snowflake. Wherever I'm tracing, I'm just holding paper down. Just so I can get a nice looking snowflake. So like I said, just take your time. Okay. I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole tracing, so I will come back when I finish tracing. Okay, so now I have traced all of the snowflake. Um, I did not trace the place where the piece of tape is, so we're going to take that off and then I'm going to just um, free draw that. I'm just going to add a little bit and then close that snowflake up. 
I just did that. I just closed it up. Because we had that piece of tape there blocking there, so just had to finish and close it up. So great, now you have your snowflake. Um, another thing that you could do if you do have white paint at home, actually, if you want to paint the snowflake, you probably could do that. Um, I didn't do that, and I don't know exactly how that works, but maybe just if you want to try it, it's a risk that you can try to take if you'd like. But otherwise, you can leave it because we'll have the white to kind of the white string to pull out that snowflake shape. Okay. So this is what it should look like, the traced, and this is where the intense work comes. So I gave you this template right here. So you're gonna make sure you take a look at this template. All those red dots indicate where the nails will go. So they're basically gonna go at any point that kind of has a tip. So the ends of the snowflake over here, those middle parts, and that'll make it easier for the string to attach. So maybe examine this for a little while. Make sure you understand where the nails have to go. Like I said, um, they're always going to be at the ends right there and some of the lines where they meet right here. So just look around. I actually missed a dot right there that I will add. But just make sure you take a peek at this and look and just examine it. Okay, now we are going to start um making indents for our nails to go in so i found this an easier way to do it um instead of having you try to hammer the tiny nails so i did give you um two bigger nails you'll notice um there's two nails that are a lot bigger than the other small nails and we are going to start putting holes to where we need our nails so i gave you that guide to kind of go based off of so kind of start wherever so i'm going to start at the top right here be careful when you're close when you hammer you might the, this end might pop up, so just be careful. You can rotate it, bring it closer to you. So I'm just gonna start right here. There's a warning, it is gonna be loud because we are hammering. So this is where you need a hammer. And this is where we need to be careful. We are using hammers and nails. You need to take your time. You need to be gentle. And like I said, take your time and let's get started. So you take your nail, put it on that corner that you need. And we're gonna hammer this in a couple times. We don't wanna hammer it all the way in. This is just helping make us an indent for the smaller nail. So it's staying. I just, and then I'm just gonna pull this out. Like I said, I just want that dot indent. As you can see that dot just so I can put the smaller nails in later. I actually have an example, so we'll put these nails in later. And then you're gonna do that for every point that I have on that diagram. So I'm gonna show you a couple times. If you're finding um, doing this difficult or if you've never used a hammer before, maybe ask a parent first to kind of show you and kind of help you guide you doing it at first. And then I'm just gonna wiggle this nail out. If it's not coming out after you wiggle it, um, I'll show you another way. So if you can't pull this up for any reason, actually that one came out really nice. So when you're putting the nail in, you're holding the nail towards the bottom and you're just banging the top. So you wanna make your fingers away from the spot where you're hammering the nail. So let's say that won't come out. Um, if you ever use the hammer, um, you know right here where it splits, there's like this little hole right here, this little crack. You use that to get nails out. So you put your nail in between that. And you pull it out. And that's if it gets really stuck in there and you can't pull it out with your hands. I'm just going to do that all the way around. Just nail it gentle. You don't need to do it really hard. And pull it out. And then you're going to do that all around your snowflake. You just need to be careful because um, this center right here 
if you turn your block around, it is not as thick as the rest of this, and that's just how the wood came. So when you're doing those center pieces, as soon as you probably bang it once, it's going to go straight through. Um, so just give it a little tap and pull it out because um, the nail will come out. Let me show you. See, so yeah, the nail is splitting that, and that is what the tape is for. We're going to put a piece of tape to cover that. So once you all finish, you won't poke yourself after that. Okay, so again, I'm doing that center piece. So I'm just going to do a little bit more gentle. And a little bit more. It's going to probably split the wood in the back. Don't worry. It is okay. And just pull it out. Like I said, this blue piece of tape is going to go right here so you won't hurt your fingers. I'm just going to do a couple more just so you can get see an idea of it. And then you notice these this snowflake right here is kind of close to the other one. It is okay. Um, I kind of picked the snowflake because the corners were kind of offset a little bit. So it's okay if it's close. You can bring, if you see that, you can bring that nail like in the traced place. I'm not going to show you. Um, you don't have to put the nail on the outside. You can put it like in the inside of your traced um, design that you had. So instead of like putting it right here at the end, put it in the inside of your trace. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. <laughs> but like I said, it should all work out and they shouldn't be pretty close together. It doesn't have to be exactly in the trace line. So just make a judgment on what you think. So once you have that, this is where, once you do all your corners, this is where you can start putting in the smaller nails. So I'm going to grab some of the smaller nails. They are small, so just be careful. Don't hammer your fingers. We made those indents so you can kind of have them sit, but don't just come over here and whack it. Just take your time. You can try holding it because we want them to go in as straight as possible. So... It is a little crooked, so we're going to tap in just a little bit. If it is a little crooked, it is okay. It doesn't have to be exactly pin straight up high. Um, you probably won't make them all straight. That is okay. Um, if it is really kind of tilting, you can hammer it the other way. So if your nail is leaning to like the left side, you want to hammer the left side to make it go straight even. Or if it's lean into the right side, hammer the right side to make it go straighter. That one's a little crooked and that's okay. So let's go to the next one. Put it in there. Hammer that down. So you want to make sure you hammer it down a good amount. You don't want to put it all the way into the wood because then you won't be able to fit your string on there. So I have a pretty much, this one's probably actually perfect right here, a little bit of a gap there. So it should be sticking out a little bit, but not too much where like the whole nail's out. It shouldn't be wiggly. This is in there really good. So it shouldn't be wiggly and it shouldn't, the tip of the nail should not be all the way touching the base of the wood. Make sure you leave a little bit of space. So I'm just going to keep going with that. And then I'm going to show you the middle piece. So I talked to you about the middle and how it would just go in super easy. And that's going to be the same way with your smaller nails. So the middle piece right here, again, had that cut out in the middle right there. So it's going to go in super easy. So you only need little taps. And that's it. And then you see it will be poking out here. So just be careful when you're rotating. Just don't put your whole hand in there. You won't. It's not like you'll be stabbed really hard as long as you're not like grabbing it and like gripping it. And like I said, this this will be exposed while you're doing it. But at the end, you will take your tape that I gave you.
and you will put it over that at the end so you can't touch that when you just have it after you finish it. Okay, so I'm going to continue that and I'll come back once I have most of it done and I will show you, um, I will do a full complete um, snowflake uh, piece for you guys. Okay, so I'm at like my last piece of my snowflake. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing. So let's do that. So like I said before, um, you should push these in to where you can't pull them out. But just remember these middle pieces um, don't have that extra support on the bottom. So they might pull out. Um, if you are working on it and you by accident push it down. I just pushed this one down by accident and it's touching. Just pull that up by the head of the nail, which is that flat piece. Don't try to push it from the bottom where the pointy end is, okay? So if you push it down by accident, just pull it back up, okay? I just wanted to give you that tip. So let's finish this part and I'm just gonna have you watch uh, me do it. So, since that nail wasn't sitting nicely in there, and it was kind of falling off already, I'm going to go back with my big nail and just make a bigger indent, just so it sits a little bit nicer in there. See, that one's not sitting in there. I did this kind of quick, so we're just going to do that again. Like I said, just take your time. So I just wanted to show you as well. Um, with this nail and then with the hole, I put my finger block in it, like my fingers fall. With this hole right, this nail right here and this hole, I made the hole go a little bit shorter because I knew they would bump into each other if I made the hole right by, right on the tip. So I just moved the hole down when I was making the indent. So when you're making those holes in your, um, your block, just remember that if you see that you think two might be a little too close, you can do that. Or if you do, don't see that and you put them too close, make one taller and then hammer the other one a little bit shorter because you want to make sure that string can get in between those two. And the last one came out a little crooked. So now you have your snowflake all hammered in. So I'm actually going to turn this around and put that piece of tape just so I don't prick myself while putting the string on. 
So that tape's gonna stay there forever. So you can paint over it or you can just leave it. I tried to pick a color that would kind of match the blue that you guys had as much as I could. Make sure that's on there. So now you won't hit your fingers. So next is I'm gonna show you how to string it. And again, um, once you do that, this was a very lengthy project. Um, take a break if you need it because the stringing is another lengthy project. So take a break, come back to it if you need to. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to string it. Okay, so now we are going to start stringing our snowflake. So you're going to take your string, take the piece off. We want to make sure our string doesn't tangle. So um, I unraveled mine a little bit. Um, you shouldn't need the full bundle of string I gave you. So, like I said, I unraveled the string. I have it kind of tucked to the side over here, and I'm going to get started. So, I'm going to find a point to tie a knot on one of the nails for, like, a starter point. So, I wouldn't do that straight in the middle. I would pick one on the outside. So, our first step is we're going to outline the snowflake shape, and then after that, we're going to fill it in. So, we're going to pick um, an outside point. So, I'm going to pick, like, one of the points of the snowflakes and I'm gonna tie I'm gonna tie a knot on here twice so you can try to tie it while it's on there or I get a knot kind of started I'm gonna double knot that So like I said, if you um, want to take a break before this point, because once you start this, you need to finish it all the way through because you cannot let go of this string. So I have this little piece of extra string. I'm just going to leave that for now. And you're going to decide which way you want to go. So either you're going to go left or right. Um, I'm going to go right. So to put the string on um, the nails, you're just going to wrap it once around each of the nail. So when you do it, you need to pull your string tight and you're gonna go to the next nail. Make sure you're paying attention to the pattern. I know it gets kind of close when it gets here. Make sure you're paying attention to the trace snowflake we trace. That's the whole point of the trace snowflake is to help you um, guide you through the whole snowflake. Making sure you're going the right way. So you're gonna make sure you're kind of pulling this tight, not like really tight just a little bit just a little bit of force and then you're gonna wrap it around that first one and then you go to the next one we're following the outline of the snowflake you can either just use your fingers to help you push or um, for the tight spots you can use a pair of tweezers and then we're just gonna wrap it around that now you want to make sure you're pulling tight wrap it around the next one and just make sure you're pushing it down so it's um, under the head of the nail. I'm gonna go to the next one and sometimes you're gonna get caught on other things. Just take your time. So we're just wrapping it around once around each of the nail. Take your time, you can practice a couple times. Make sure you're paying attention to what nail you already wrapped. So this one's already wrapped, so just make sure you're paying attention to which ones you already done. And if you wrap it twice by accident, that is okay. And again, make sure you're pulling it tight. And we're just following the outline. If you let your string go and not pull it tight, it's gonna unravel your whole thing. So just make sure you are paying attention. So this first is, um, since there's a lot of little strings in this bundle of string, it's catching some of the strings and not all, I'm just gonna wrap it again.
Oh, I need a little bit more string. This, the rest of the strings kind of get tangled in my thing. So I'm gonna just take a break real quick. I'm just holding the string with my right hand and then just getting myself situated. Okay, so back at it. So I'm just wrapping around once around the head of the nail. It's okay if you wrap it twice. Make sure you're paying attention to the pattern and you're doing the right nails. Like I said, just take your time. I've done this so many times for this video, so I'm pretty quick at it. And if you've done this before, you might be okay. But if this is your first time, just take your time. There's no, no right direction. Just make sure you're following the outline. And I'm just twisting them um, around the nails. There's no wrong way to twist it around the nail, just as long as you're twisting it. Make sure you're pulling your string tight at all times. Make sure you're going the right direction. Again, I am just wrapping, wrapping the string around the nail. And I do a couple because um they were coming apart. See, they're coming apart. See if you undo one of your nails, you might undo a couple of them. So just make sure you're wrapping them again. Kind of tight. Like I said, if you have a pair of tweezers, that might help for those tight contact ones. So I'm at the end where I first started, so I'm going to twist this around that nail like five or six times because I want to be able to let it go without this unraveling. So now we just need to do a knot on it. So I'm going to take a little piece of the string, cut a little bit of off. Sorry, my scissors are... And then you're gonna take the string that you first started with and we're just gonna tie those together into a knot. And we wanna make sure the knot goes as close as possible to the nail. So we're just gonna pull that. So 
we just took the piece that we ended with and the piece we started with and we just tied a knot. I'm gonna do that again. So once we're done with so that, my right. video did cut off a little bit at the end, but um, all you do is cut off the strings and then you have your snowflake um, string art. So once mine looks a little plain because I didn't paint mine, but once you paint yours with that nice dark blue, that white string will really um, shine through. So I hope you enjoyed this craft and let me know if you have any questions. My email is on that little piece of paper in the bag and um, hopefully I explained the video okay. If you have any more questions, like I said, email me or I can reference you to another video that I use. But other than that, have a good day. Enjoy your snowflake uh, string art. Bye-bye.